So uh, up next, um, I think uh, we're going to start right away with the next session, organizing a virtual event with open source tools. And we have here um, Mario Belling, um, CEO of OpenTech and uh, co-founder of Force Asia. He also um, uh, the uh, uh, lead um, the project lead for Event Yay. He gonna uh, talk to us, um, share some experience how how we can use open source tool to organize a virtual event like this because it's getting more and more important uh, that the community um, can uh, continue uh, to connect with uh, with other people through online event. Mario. The floor is you. I get. I saw that you already have the presentation, right? Okay. Yes. Um, so I just uploaded it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, uh, Fook and um, all the organizers of Ubicon Asia 2021. And it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to connect uh, with you. I'm always like a, a yeah amazed like how much is going on around the world and um, um, how many people are active um, in the free and open source uh, community um, and uh, I who have, haven't heard about. So I definitely appreciate uh, um, your work and uh, organizing the event. So I'm going to talk about organizing virtual events with uh, open source tools. And I specifically want to showcase here and share a bit more about um, Eventier the open event tool that's organized by um, the team at Force Asia and Open Tech in Berlin. I'm right now in Berlin. So greetings to all of you. Um, by the way, we have beautiful weather here in Berlin. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very uh, nice and sunny and you might hear some music from the background. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna hide it. So um, it's uh, actually uh, um, like a lot of drums and so on because today we have the marathon here in Berlin. So, um, so a lot of people are running there, and it's right in front of my door, and they are drummers and so on, like supporting the, uh, uh, yeah, the marathon people. I don't know. Maybe I can even show you. Um, yeah, why not? We we can't be together at one place, but we can share a bit uh, what's going on. So. Yeah, I don't know if you can catch a little bit, uh, um, but um, yeah, you can definitely hear the drums, I guess, uh, exactly like a marching band. So that's what's going on in Berlin. It's really nice to see um, how life is coming back um, into the city. So I hope it's also coming back um, to uh, uh, yeah where you are. And I hope like we are working together around the world to overcome um, this crisis and any other crisis that um, people all over the world might face. And I think we can use, of course, open source for it. Open source gives a, a possibility to connect um, and, and collaborate. And, um, and this is what fascinates me about open source. But uh, years ago, um, I uh, found like that uh, when we organize events, we don't have all the tools available um, as open source. And that made me sad. So we started to develop um, the open event, Eventier project. Um, yeah, and I would like to uh, talk a bit about uh, um, the project. So um, we have a lot of contributors. And uh, yeah, people come and go, but like here's a showcase here, a few uh, pictures of people who have contributed, contributed over the years. But actually, I think we have more than 300 uh, people who, like across different projects, uh, different components, and so on, contributed. And of course, we use a lot of libraries. So uh, in the end, I don't really know exactly how many um, people contribute to the overall ecosystem of Open Event. Uh, we have, uh, um, as you can see here, we we are using Eventier um, uh, at Ubicon Asia, and I'm very glad about it. But like, it's not just Eventier. For example, right now we. Uh, communicate through Big Blue Button. And hundreds, over a thousand of people maybe have contributed to Big Blue Button also. So, so basically, the whole ecosystem of uh, Open Event, all the components and so on, thousands of people definitely uh, contributed to making it happen. And it's just, um, it's just amazing what's possible by um, combining all the tools and building on the work of so many people around the world. So um, it's uh, really thrilling. And um, 
what are the starts of open events? So we developed it since 2015. And uh, yeah, there was no uh, really good open source ticketing and speaker system at that time that we knew of. Um, we were, of course, unhappy with proprietary systems. We were like always paying to proprietary systems, but uh, we weren't able to change anything ourselves. So we're using the system also for the First Asia Summit. And um, yeah, we had a lot of events and we had at points like, for example, three to 4,000 people like participating at those events. And um, yeah, our requirements for um, the project, of course, were clear. It has to be free and open. There must be a technology stack that matches the um, um, cap capabilities of the team. Um, yeah, and we want to keep privacy in mind, not sharing the data, but on the other hand, sharing the data with the organizers is something, by the way, that you don't find on meetup.com, for example. They keep all the data and they let you connect through the platform, but they don't share, for example, the email addresses with the organizer. So all these kind of questions, of course, open standards, open APIs, um, this is a, a given. And um, nevertheless, we thought like a lot of people are used to Eventbrite and other tools. So we thought the UI, the starting UI to create an event or to, to get a ticket, it should be similar to systems like Eventbrite. We don't want to reinvent everything. This is like something that people are used to. So let's try to make it easy for them to switch from proprietary systems to an open source uh, system. At the same time, we wanted to include um, a call for speakers, for example, yeah, tools like that. We wanted to be able to have different team rules, to have a drag and drop scheduling, and um, yeah, tools like Android and the website generators. So it should be all in one where we have different components, though, that can be developed independently. So we don't have this one big thing that like has to be uh, uh, like maintained by, by, by a huge team or something, but components can be updated and so on at uh, different points. And um, of course, the idea of microservices there uh, really played into what we try to achieve. So um, yeah, the ecosystem uh, that looks like this, we have a front end, we have an uh, um, Android app, we have an organizer app. Now in the uh, times when many people are at home, actually we're not focusing so much at uh, um, the uh, mobile apps because many people access events through the desktop, um, but uh, they are also um, uh, being worked on. And we have a website generator where you can export your entire event um, as an external website, so you don't have to um, depend on, on, for example, a hosted service somewhere. You can just have a static website uh, without too much overhead to set it up. Okay, so technology stack, um, yeah, Python, of course. Um, the apps have uh, mobile apps use Java, Kotlin, Swift, um, but like as I said, we focus on the desktop. Um, so Python, JavaScript, Ember, um, these are uh, uh, technologies that we are. Um, have uh, been using and are using today. Yeah, there are a few screenshots here. I think I would just quickly uh, click through the screenshots, maybe then go to the live system uh, to show you a bit. So um, we have a dashboard where you can uh, see things. Uh, we have a step-by-step -step guide where you can create events. Um, there are like tickets that you can uh, configure, like donation tickets, um, supporter ticket, free tickets, um, online payment solutions. Uh, we're using Stripe or PayPal. You can also use offline uh, methods like uh, by check or so. Um, that's also possible. And um, yeah, you can add sponsors. Um, you can um, create sessions and speakers, um, all the details. Um, there's a call for speakers that you can answer through the system. And um, then organizers can choose different details, different um, uh, data that they want to collect. Speaker details, session details, uh, they can choose like, do I want the biography? Uh, do I need a photo? Um, yeah, where do people live? Or maybe I have to decide like according to the speaker experience, I want to have a beginner's track and so on. So there are all kinds of um, um, ways we can uh, collect data. And um, we have an overview for um, um, organizers. Um, how are the sales going? Um, yeah, how many orders do they have? Um, what is the status of uh, different uh, um, uh, sales um, tickets and so on? And um, yeah, you can then, when you have the uh, data collected from speakers, you can um, decide are they confirmed? There's a state on the left hand side. You can simply click on that state and then change the status. Uh, you can rate talks if you are a team. Um, and um, yeah, there's a 
basic thing. And then, of course, scheduler. So how to build a schedule. So basically, on the left-hand side, for example, you see there are uh, um, yeah, sessions, and you drag and drop these sessions over here, and then you will be able to, yeah, according to the rooms that you configured, you will be able to put the sessions in there and export the, um, uh, the uh, um, schedule also. Um, for example, um, into a calendar view or into um, a PDF or so. Yeah, and um, yeah, we're working and we're getting better and better at, uh, um, uh, uh, at uh, um, making um, also export available APIs and so on. Jung Bin just, uh, just uh, mentioned also in the chat here that uh, the UI looks different. Um, actually, yes, that is a different UI, like uh, I, I'm showing like different UIs. You can configure the UI of Eventia, so um, it's open source, but we also have a theming possibility. So um, uh, what I have here, it's an, it's an earlier theme that we also used to uh, have on the main side. And uh, yeah, I'm happy to point you guys to um, the uh, theming um, repository where you can just copy the theme and then make your own theme if you want to set up the system yourself. So different themes are possible uh, in the system. And I want to talk also quickly about another component, which is the web app generator. So web app generator um, here, it's very simple. As you can see, there's an email address. You can choose again a theme um, and uh, um, choose a session style. So you can like, for example, expand sessions or you click on it and go to another page. Yeah, there are different preferences. People ask for this kind of feature, and um, yeah, we have the, the latest API version, is API version two, um, and um, yeah, basically then you can generate an entire website with uh, all your data. Um, of course, you don't have all the interactive uh, uh, features. Yeah, yeah, people can't log into a static website and so on, but that's not always needed, especially if you want to document your event afterwards and just host um, the event, for example, on um, like, let's say, FTP server or uh, GitLab or GitHub pages, some static website that um, uh, you don't have to maintain, you just leave it there and uh, yeah, all is good. Um, so we don't want to maintain like CMS for the long time. So quickly clicking through the um, uh, mobile apps also, um, as I said, it's not the thing, but like here, for example, you see um, an exported P uh, session PDF that's nice if you have um, offline events, if you have in-person events, you can uh, uh, um, uh, print it out like on a very big, big uh, paper, for example, or you can like just decide you only want to print out certain rooms and then you can put it on the room page or put it on a big board. So to have it visual, so people go out, yeah, no, because you're an offline event, you don't always want to be on the phone and everyone on the phone and phone, where am I going? Yeah, it's it's a communal thing. You have a a, 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 a big poster and uh, you look at it and you look together with other people and you say hey are you also going there i'm going there and so on and um, you you have some interaction so that about this so session added to your google you can add the calendar and um, we also have a batch um, uh, platform unfortunately i have to say it's not that well maintained um, there wasn't like a lot of interest in the last two years because of COVID. but uh, there's also batch creator project and uh, i'm sure we'll come back to this one um, as you can see it was in a pretty nice state hasn't been updated so it's a bit out of date but um, yeah i think it's not big deal uh, very difficult to if we to get it running again deployment is through um uh, yeah continuous integration so we achieved now to uh, deploy a test server from the development branch and a complete server master branch we uh, we uh, deployed directly to the server and it works in like, let's say 90% of the time, 10% of the time we still have to um, uh, look over it and, and um, check out um, uh, if maybe the Docker image didn't build properly or something like that. But uh, yeah, the future is also to move away from Docker to build everything entirely um, on um, our own machine. Um, as you know, Docker like has some challenges recently um, even like for simple projects they're charging more and more so um yeah and it's maybe not the the whole architecture is maybe not completely uh, free and open and so um we prefer to run it ourselves and uh, so i'm already in the uh, time uh, of what's next but um, i would like to go and and share now uh, a little bit um here on my screen and uh yeah let me do that quickly. So
So I want to talk about the system and uh, I will also talk about um, the code. Um, the uh, should be loading for you guys. And uh, what you see right now is um, our main developer, um, the profile of our main developer, Arib Jamal. So um, whatever we see today of the system, um, it's a lot of the work of Arib. And we have been working it on, on Eventier for many years. Arib joined us um, around five years ago, over five years ago. And um, yeah, over the time he became the technical lead, um, kind of the CTO um, of the project. And he brought people together from all over the world. He was a fantastic and wonderful person. Unfortunately, um, Arib passed away in the Corona uh, crisis last year. And um, yeah, he was, in my view, he was a genius. Uh, he was uh, among the top 15 contributors um, to open source in India, and actually not just open source, to coding, coding on the GitHub platform, top 15. As you know, there are thousands of people, like a, a huge number of people, maybe, maybe hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, uh, and um, this is by itself an achievement to contribute so much and work with so many people. I had always a lot of, a job offers, but he said uh, he wants to work full time um, with Force Asia with uh, um, uh, our projects. And um, yeah, he was wonderful and just always working. And it was a big hit last year when um, he died within very few days. Um, and uh, yeah, I want to remember him as um, as a fantastic person. And you can see here um, his his contributions nearly every day. He contributed and we even thought he might come back uh, after a few days. It all happened so fast and um, that was a very sad time for this project. But a lot of developers then came back to us and said, um, this is very sad. And, and I was even like wondering if we can continue this project uh, afterwards. But um, people said, we want to continue the um, legacy of Arib. We want to continue of what he has built and what he has like invested and, and, you know, the knowledge he shared with people, people then said they want to give back. So, um, yeah, that was a reap and um, we have uh, our project and uh, that we continue um, based on his work. So, um, yeah, just remembering Arib Jamal. And Arib, uh, um, like, uh, introduced a lot of uh, uh, also different um, ideas to, to uh, how we can cooperate uh, uh, in the community. For example, Mario, we can't hear you anymore. Yeah, I dropped out a moment. So Arib, when you um, when you did. Uh, 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 work with him he, he also shared with you how to work in the in the community and uh, uh, one thing he for example uh, um, introduced was like uh, more communication on the gitter channel um, and and more events so i also would like to point you to um, our gitter channels for example right now you see the uh, front end and um, how people uh, yeah, also home folk reporting bugs how people talk here and um, share about their knowledge. So if you're interested to participate in the project, to develop it, maybe adjust it for yourself, deploy it for your own community, definitely join us, join us um, on the Gitter channel. Then you find uh, um, all the code on the Force Asia GitHub. So um, Force Asia GitHub. And there you can just uh, uh, type in open um, event. So the software we call open event. And um, yeah, there we will see um, a lot of components and you will see what ones are more active. But um, uh, Jungbin, as I pointed out earlier, the theme is also here. There's not much activity on it. It's pretty stable, but you can check it out here uh, as well if you are interested uh, in that. Okay, so let's... Uh, um, uh, talk a bit more about um, the um, project um, and, and, and share a bit more about how, how it works. So um, I think a lot of you already discovered um, how, how the project can be used. 
And um, I really like the schedule that we uh, um, came up with um, last year. So we, we enabled people to, um, for example, build their own sessions. Um, I'm going a bit in detail here because I think maybe a lot of people here in this uh, talk will know about Open Event and Eventier, but maybe they don't know about all the detailed feature yet. So I will jump over like and, and um, not talk about the basic features. I will talk about a few nice things here. So what we have, for example, is that you can remember your own talk. You can add it to your own uh, schedule. So for example, I can click here, I can click here, and now it will show up in my own schedule. This is a really nice and cool feature. Click on my schedule and it will see all the sessions that are on my schedule. Also, if I'm a speaker, I would see my speaker sessions. Yeah, and... Uh, um, <coughs> Okay, that's not working, but I can like, oh, I have to check this out. Maybe I uh, activated a filter. If you want to uh, clear all filters, you can click here. Ah, okay, yes, as you can see now, all the filters are done. And then I can still click on my schedule, but I can also activate a filter actually if I, um, let me try a micro OS. And then, yeah, and then the filter, as you can see, oh, no, no, micro um, is coming. Um, so you you play around a bit with it. You can also like, for example, uh, choose the tracks here, filter according to tracks, um, filter the rooms, filter the session types. So all are pretty nice, um, uh, cool things. Um, then uh, something that we did recently is groups and uh, we're still heavily working on it. So um, this feature is still in alpha stage. So um, yeah, here are, we have a few test groups. For example, I click on the FOSS Asia test group and you will go to a page where you uh, see um, all the events in this, uh, in this group. So we have here um, past events. And um, yeah, they are followers and some people decide, okay, they want to be public so they can also share um, that they are members of this uh, group um, themselves. Um, then we have um, uh, the question like, how can people actually create an event? So create an event uh, on most pages, you have the create event button. And as you can see, there are different um, yeah, sub pages or uh, wizard pages. There's basic details, there's additional info, there's attendee form, sponsors, session and speakers. So you can uh, pretty much uh, fill in everything, but in order to make a simple event, let's say you only have a meetup, you don't have to fill in that much. So I will like create an event, test event, at um, UboCon Asia. And um, yeah, you don't even have to select all, all, all the options here. It helps, of course, Google to find you. I say it's an online event. And the event is, for example, on the 20th of October. Um, I can say, yeah, it's just on the 20th and it starts at a certain time. So I can choose the time zone. Or, um, usually, like we have the time zone here that you are in. I'm in Berlin right now, but you can um, find any time zone. Um, for example, um, I can find like, um, I don't know, can I find Seoul here? Yes, I can even find Seoul here um, in Asia. And I say it's an afternoon event. Um, yeah, it starts, for example, at 3 p.m. in Seoul and it finishes at 5. Okay, cool. And uh, I can say, yeah, uh, this is the most important event of the year in, in Seoul um, about open source. Okay, cool. And um, yeah, I join, I can choose a, a picture. I can find some um, picture in my uh, um, yeah, gallery, for example. Um, don't know, like, let me find something here. Um, yeah, maybe something like that. Um, I can always change the, um, the, the picture, look around um, what I like. So um, to, to um, decide then um, anything that fits me, yeah. So for example, here we see a picture of our last event in Singapore. I can change the size um, it gets uploaded and um, that's cool. Uh, but of course I need tickets. So when I have the options, ticket event or registration event. Registration event is just for one person can register as or click. So if you know hop in, don't, um, or for example, uh, that's similar to that. Or you can have a ticketed event. So let's say, uh, yeah, that's a free community event. And I say community ticket, I can now decide, uh, do I want a description? This is the perfect ticket for community members. 
everyone should get it, of course. And um, I can say what's the ticket sales time. Usually the ticket sales time is by default until the end of the event. But I also want only one person at a time get a ticket. So I don't want them to get 10 tickets or something. And I can add an after uh, order message. So this is the message that people um, uh, get after. This is the message that, um, like, let's say, attendees or participants get um, in their ticket email. Okay, cool. So I can save it as draft now. And if I want to view it, I can say preview um, or I can just publish it. But I think uh, before I publish, I will actually add a video. And uh, yeah, I can switch on video. So as you can see, you have this, all these options here of what you can do. And um, I will activate the video functionality. Um, I have a one video room, the virtual event room. This is the event room, but I can even have more rooms in micro locations. I didn't define any micro locations and I just want to be up and running quickly because I only have a two hour event. So I only need one room. So I can add a big blue button room here, for example. It's automatically generated. So I don't need to fill in anything, and uh, but I want to enable recording. I want to be able to record it. So um, I want to invite uh, a, um, a developer or like a, not developer moderator, um, but I, I, I will do that later. For now, I'm I'm okay. I just want to set it up. So I save it, and now I video is enabled, and um, I can publish my event. Why not? Cool. I publish it. Do I really want to publish it? Yes, I want. I'm sure of it. So now my event is published, and I can. Um, um, open it so it opens in a new link usually a new tab so um, in order for it uh, we can see it here I will just copy paste it into the URL so here's my event here the uh, in the background you see the photo here's the ticketing and um, yeah I was up and running in just a very short time and um, that's cool and um, I can now continue Earlier, I showed to you how I can uh, have groups. So how can I add this event to a group now? Well, for now, we have uh, the flow like that. Maybe we can improve, uh, improve in future, but for now, I think that's logic. So for, for example, I want to add it to the Force Asia group. I go to the Force Asia group. Okay, no, it's not here. Um, I have to my groups, groups, and I have my groups here. And here you can see all the options, view, events, settings, followers, team members. Ah, so I have more options here. I go to events, which is events for me as a as an editor. And uh, yeah, as you can see here, I have now all the events showing up um, that are um, under my name. And uh, I can say I can include now this test event. So I scroll down and I can find any event that I wanted to add. Yeah, so as you can see, I have quite a few events here. I can choose any, for example, I can choose the one that I just made, or I can choose the one that is just here in my list. I can add event to group. Now it disappears here. It's not here anymore. I just added it because it moves up here to the event of group events, moves to the group events. So it's it's among all of these events here in the group events there. And if I don't want any event here in the group events, I can, of course, remove it. I have to save it. And then I go back to the group's overview page. If I now want to see it, I can go back and go to the public page, right? So we there's a difference, of course, between the public page and the private page that group owners see. Um, yeah, so this is our starting thing. I think we can still make it easier and better, but like it's a step-by-step -step thing. And it, it's really one of our cool, new, nice features. Okay, so I... Uh, hope I got uh, um, your attention. I hope you would check out the system because as you can see, there are a lot of features. There's a lot of things that I couldn't show in such a short time. We would probably need a, a workshop of like one or two days to really go into the depth. But um, yeah, I invite you, please export yourself and uh, join us in the community to try out the tool. Uh, please join us if you're interested to develop. And uh, yeah, join us if you have knowledge uh, on uh, other areas, for example, translations. And I know uh, a number of people here already helped with the translations. For example, we have an increasing community also that translate uh, translates to Korean. Um, I am German myself, so, um, so German is nearly entirely translated. Uh, we have different components, but uh, uh, you can just go to WebLate. Um, it's an open source translation system and you can help to translate it there. So become a developer become a translator or become a user 
everything is fine. We're happy if you connect with us and um, yeah, work with us here in the community. Okay, so I'm at the end of my talk and um, be happy to take any questions if there are um, any questions from your side. Yeah, Mario, Elmo here. Uh, good to see you again, Mario. Um, let me see. I was, uh, when, before Ari passed away, I was doing something on the, uh, on the Android version on my mobile phone and I was asking him some questions with regards to uh, how come it doesn't behave the same and he was saying that it's still in development. Uh, is there any progress on that or should do you need anyone to do testing or something like that? Because uh, I can't code, but I can do testing if you want. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, like, uh, of course, like it was a big uh, shock for us when we uh, lost our reap and it, it took us some time to, to catch up with development and um, the Android app and the iOS app are a bit uh, behind right now. I mean, the, the, the truth is that there's less interest and there's less focus on, on our side. So we focused on the uh, front end recently. And uh, honestly, there are some areas in the Android app there that are dysfunctional. Furthermore, we uh, always have uh, Google contacting us all the time. They're always changing their policies, which means, for example, uh, um, it's difficult. They don't allow you to sell a ticket somehow through the app or something. They say in-app purchase, they want to get a share and so on. Yeah, so it's like there's a lot of work lying ahead of us before we are able to get uh, the Android app up to the same level that the web app uh, is now. And uh, yeah, a lot of updates and so on, like Google policies. So that uh, that will be challenging. And thank you for your offer. I will definitely come back to you. But um, I, I guess uh, um, like before spring, we won't be able to release like a proper new app and um, except if there's a huge change and we can all go back to live events. But I think uh, it will still take a little bit of time before we can go back to live events. Uh, right, thank you. Okay, and yeah, I think I'm, my time is over, but I'm always happy to um, um, answer your questions or you can get back to me. And uh, yeah, I'm back to Yong Bin. And Yong Bin, also thank you very much for your contributions to the project. <laughs> And uh, so I definitely appreciate it. And I saw um, uh, how you um, have been active as well. Thank you very much. Thanks for the great presentation. Um, I think I've been using the uh, event day uh, for this event. Uh, I think um, it's very great, I think, uh, because I can, uh, the feature is also very flexible. We can also uh, place not just the uh, big button or GC, we can also uh, place some custom links to uh, some other video calls, right? Uh, so we in, in our case, we just paste a button to our uh, get to so that people can easily join the uh, get to space. So I think the uh, event is, is very great. It is very fully featured and and of course it's open source. Yeah, with Gather Town, I think it opens in another uh, um, external website. It, it would be so cool yeah. if we can actually embed it. Uh, in event J, but uh, nowadays browsers prevent you from this. They say it's a security issue if you have a website behind another website. Actually, a few years ago, it used to be standard, but uh, not anymore. Um, however, like we're still somehow available, uh, able to achieve that feature. So I'm um, happy to see that you like it. Thank you very much. Thanks again for the great presentation. Um, Thank you, everyone. Again.